Well, 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 hello, good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening. I'm Hazel, or so I've been told, and I shall be your host for today along with the fish. Uh, Ori the betta fish, who is joining me from the aquarium. Uh, he, you can see him on the right hand side of the tank, he's sitting in the roots. Over there, those are the roots of a pothos plant that's growing like up out of it. You can sort of see a couple leaves coming out. Um, he does look a bit dead. I promise he's fine. <laughs> he just likes to sit there. I'm sure he'll move eventually. Oh, I see you got Kira off your chair. Yeah, she went to go find a lap to sit in. You know, chairs are good, but chairs with people in them are apparently better. Uh, the intro song. It's not new. <laughs> I I do have the intro song posted on a SoundCloud, not because I'm trying to make it as a hit SoundCloud musician, but just because I wanted to have a web page that I could point to um, if anybody on YouTube's ever like, I made this, and I can be like, no, me, you can't, <laughs> you can't have my video. Uh, when did I post that? It's old. It's also not good. I, I swear you guys have Stockholm Syndrome. The post is four years ago. This is not new. Uh, I would like to thank Diabetic Dalton for their brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad, Dalton. The Mackie Moment with a nine month resub. Good morning from Australia. And Star Auger with a three month resub. My comfy shirt came in the mail today. It is great. Awesome. Oh man. Uh, is this shirt your new merch? No, 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 no. This shirt was um, merch from a friend of mine uh, that actually preceded the cat merch. I didn't completely rip it off, but I was inspired by how much I enjoyed having a large cat on my shirt. Uh, this is my buddy Silver Kitty. He's a, uh, he's a very, he's like a rank one uh, arena player. And when he got his first rank one title, he was Vindictive Gladiator Silver Kitty. So it says Vindictive down here, and then it's got a Silver Kitty on it. I got, I'm holding it down for the, for the bros. Uh, Espresso Cleric, thank you for the four month reset. Mm. Why did I think the intro sound with Crash Bandicoot? We get that quite a bit. We get that a fair bit. So it's Wednesday, um, which means nothing. I'm just saying things that are obvious to fill time and air and wait for my personality to kick in because I don't think that woke up today. I woke up today. I've been doing things like normal, but I'm not convinced that I um, exist today. We're gonna be doing, um, we're gonna be doing Kara. We're gonna do the rest of the Kara runs, but don't mind me. I'm just, um, so here's the thing. Over the last, like, year and a half, two years, uh, the world finally convinced me and talked me into getting all the things. And now, you know, obviously enough, predictably enough, I need all the things. So specifically, there is a pair of gloves. They're called engineering gloves, and they are a very low drop, we don't know how low, from Venture Co. Tinkerers. To make this even worse, Venture Co. Tinkerers share spawns with Venture Co. Strip Miners, Venture Co. Foreman, um, in this little teeny tiny, like, hill, um, plus camp, plus cave situation out in Northern Stranglethorn. There's not very many of them overall, very few of them are ever Tinkerers, and their respawn rate sucks. So, um, naturally, I handmade a rarity plugin to track how many attempts that I have on them, and I told it it's a 1 in 100 chance. I have no idea, because Wowhead has no data for it because um, I don't think it's necessarily that rare. I think it's just that there's very few of these and there's like no reason to kill them. So there's not that much data for them. Um, plus there's rumors that it was taken off the off the um, drop table for like a couple of expansions, but then put back on at some point. I don't really know what happened, but regardless, I'm just like keeping characters out here. And then whenever I log in, I'm like, oh, I'll just like clear out that little area. And I'm not so much farming for the engineering gloves, although they are the last thing I need for Northern Stranglethorn. I'm just kind of collecting attempts, as it were. I've collected 16 attempts, and that's across probably like a day and a half of logging in and doing it. I only get like one to three attempts per clear. It's rough. But, you know, this is what is fun to me these days, because like I said, I don't have a personality. The, um, yesterday, last night, I, I had a couple hours and I was sitting down and I was like, finally, I shall sit, I shall consume some tea, I shall enjoy myself. And I looked within my heart to find out what it was I wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was come out to Northern Stranglethorn and uh, kill Blood Scout Mystics over in the ruins of Zilkunda for their very low percent chance to drop, um, but one in 200% chance to drop, a pressed felt robe. Is it cute? I mean, it looks kind of like comfy pajamas, but you know, I'm never going to wear that. But I needed to farm it. And I did. Um, my new favorite thing is to, for these transmog items, to make custom rarities. 
for them. Like I'll look up the drop rate approximately on Wowhead. I will look up the item ID and the NPC IDs. I will plug it all into Rarity so that it can track my kill attempts for me and then notify me when I get the items. So um, I will, I will. I will continue to farm things because I'm having a wonderful time. <laughs> but right now it's a Mount Run Day, Mount Run Day. We're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more runs of Legion Karazhan. And assuming that we have time at the end of the stream before I have to go at five, assuming there's any time, I might put together one more fish party for that last fish because I never remember to put on my fish goggles and I think I just need to like grind it out. <sighs> Um, I, I think I thanked Espresso Cleric for their four months, but just in case I spaced and I didn't, thank you very much. And Jamie Lee with a 16-month resub. Hazel, what would you say is the biggest difference living in the U.S. versus Canada, and what do you miss the most? So, easy answer is I miss my family because they live in Canada and they do not live in the States. And another easy kind of a cop-out answer is that um, Azeroth is the same no matter where you're connecting to the internet, and I very rarely go outside. So, it doesn't make functionally that big of a difference to me. But um, tax is different. Uh, sales tax was more. Um, Oregon, the state that I live in, has 0% sales tax. You pay tax elsewhere, um, income, property taxes and such, but you, um, they, they, don't, they don't get you on sales tax, whereas uh, British Columbia has PST and GST, or at least they used to. They were changing it every year, but they have plenty of it, so that's a little different. And I'm sure there are more, but like I said, I don't go out much. <laughs> So functionally for me, in my internet addicted life, not that much changes. Uh, Trotter DMP, thank you for a brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Shmeven with a two month resub. Uh, what helped you move from three to four mouse clears to a full five mouse? Thanks for the great streams. So um, I did a video just in case you didn't catch it, maybe you caught it, but if you didn't catch it, I did a video on the things that really pushed me to getting a full five mask, but it was basically getting the weak aura that, sh that tracks your Gift of the Titans cooldown as well as um, like your potion colors and whatnot. There's a weak aura that you can get for that. And then learning the buff locations for like three and four mass. And up until that point, I hadn't really bothered with those NPC buffs that you can get. And then I finally decided to sit down and learn what they were and where you got them and get them every run. And they make a massive difference. So getting those and then also consumables, potions, food, flasks, um, you know, all uh, drums, all, all of the above. Uh, and it doesn't have to be Horrific Vision specific food, but just make sure that you're using consumables in every category. Runes, if you've got them. Um, everything helps. Um, so that's that's the thing. <sighs> uh, let's see. Glambring had their 13 month resub and said, Thank you for your excellent content. Always enjoyable. Helps with waiting for Shadowlands too. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's very sweet. Uh, Rai902 had a three month resub. Hey, Hazel. Happy three months. Hope you're well. I'm doing pretty good. And my rain boots with a brand new sub. Uh, appreciate it. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. On topic for today, it has been raining heavily today, which I've been very much enjoying. We needed the rain, and there's something very satisfying about just sitting inside and watching it just sheet down out there. How do the gloves cost 1.4 million gold? So they're not even a particularly exciting appearance. It's just the fact that there's barely any of them ever because, like I said, it's a really gross thing to farm, and nobody cares. So that's why I'm just, I, it's kind of like a pet project. I want to see how many attempts it takes me, you know? Maybe they'll never drop, and maybe this will just be a weird thing I do for the rest of my WoW days, and 10 years from now, my guildies will be like, Hazel, what are you still doing in Northern Stranglethorn? And I'll be like, I need my engineering gloves. Um, but, you know, eventually, unless I die first, I will find out how many attempts it'll take me to get those gloves from the Tinkers. If it is an equivalent drop rate to similar um, BOE appearances, that are tied to specific mob IDs in other nearby zones, because I've farmed a few of them from Westfall, um, I've farmed a few other ones from Stranglethorn, it's usually between 1 in 100 and 1 in 200, kind of like a 1% to a 0.9%, it could, or a 1% to a point, whatever, math, you know. It's, it's usually not crazy, especially when you can do a couple at a time, it's just the spawn rate that makes that one awful. Mm. Have you fished up the Great Sea Ray? And if you have, how many casts did it take you? I'm up to about 4,500. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I So I fished up my first Great Sea Ray. <laughs> and you can see where this is going. I fished up my first one early in the expansion before they nerfed the drop rate. So I don't know how many casts it took, but it was like less than 200 easily. I was just getting raid mats. And then I accidentally fished up another one 
earlier this month while I was just fishing for Secret Fish of Mechagon, I just pulled up another Great Sea Ray just because. Uh, so that was cool, and then I and then I sold that one. So I have had two so far, and I'm deeply sorry for your. Uh, I'm deeply sorry for your for your situation. Francesca Fiore with an 11 month resub. Hooray! Thank you very much. Mooney with the 300 bits. Let me scroll a little bit and find them. There they are. Thank you. And Alien, thanks for the brand new set. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. A Swift Brewfest Ram just dropped for me, so I'm passing that good luck onto you in chat. Now I just need the Kodo. Good luck, good luck. Grats on your, uh, grats on the ram. Hazel, if I want to farm, corrupted mementos and mail muncher more efficient to do no mask runs or full masks. As many masks as you can comfortably do quickly. Um, I was doing four mask clears, like three and fours, but preferably four to grind mementos. And the way I ended up doing it was uh, I skipped the little crystal thingies. I know they give you more mementos, but it's like not enough to really make it worth looking for them. And it slows the runs down too much for me anyways. If you're really good at finding them, then sure live your life. But I always forgot to turn them in. So forget those, just do chests and regular clears. And with four masks up, assuming that you have the the gear to really crunch those out, you will, um, you'll be, you'll have a, just a fine time cranking out mementos. It'll take a little bit, but not too bad. <sighs> what is your second camera? I'm so confused. Uh, that is my aquarium camera. It's just like a webcam that I move around to different pets. Sometimes it's a dog cam, sometimes it's a cat cam. Today it is a fish cam, and on the top right hand side you can see my bed of fish. Uh, that's Ori, named after Farseer Ori from Najatar. He likes hanging out and napping in that spot. Um, so, a little bit of a fish cam. I decided not to turn on the light because I figured we can see him reasonably well and, you know, he gets kind of like the cool purple glow from the couch lights and the shelf lights. Mm, Elysium, thank you for the brand new set. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Said Tin Win, finally got my Mad World achievement. Congrats. Also, BRD is terrible. <laughs> you should not, in a standard mood, need to leave dungeons three times to gather grind pets. Oh, no. Oh, man, that, that, that was a tough one for sure. Second camera is Groot. Uh, they aren't fond of other fish. Uh, generally, I mean, it's a it's not a good idea to have multiple male betta fish with each other. But in a tank that is large enough, you can keep betta fish with other fish. There's just considerations to be made, such as if they're brightly colored, the betta fish might feel threatened and harass them. If they are nippy, they might think the betta fish looks uh, fun to bite and bite him. If, uh, if they're very small, the betta fish might eat them. If they're very big, they might eat the betta fish. There's considerations to be made, but people can and do keep betta fish in community tanks. I just would not do more than one male in a tank. Um, and I've never done the female sorority thing, but I've, uh, I've heard that can be good. Lux, thank you very much for the bits. I almost feel bad for my part in helping you stick with all the things this time around and cursing you for the rest of your life, almost, but not quite. It's the same feeling I had when I was first shown data for Azeroth. My, like, my life is ruined, but honestly, it wasn't, I wasn't going anywhere great anyways. It's not like I've put down my Academy Award winning screenplay and decided to collect all the things instead. Like, my, my ambitions were really medium, so this is fine, I can handle it. Uh, like your cat shirt, nice to see you try to stay comfy and curt. <laughs> comfy, sure. Current, um... <laughs> Am I current? I'm not against being current, but I don't know if I've ever made it a priority. I've had this shirt for at least three or four years. Uh, hit my 250 mount achievement about eight days ago. Congrats. About to hit 271 today. You're moving up in the world. Cats are always in season. That's what I'm saying. They're just always fashionable, you know? There's, you know, cute cats, mean looking cats, cat silhouettes. Just the word cat. Always trendy. Uh, just gold cat, finally. Congratulations. Wow. That's a lot of gold. I've never even considered actually doing that. Watched your video in the Lucid Nightmare Maze. Gave me the inspiration I needed. Got it late last night. Congrats. How can I find out the lockout for killing mobs and bosses that drop mounts? Always get confused whether they're weekly or daily lockouts. So for the most part, if it's from a raid, that is weekly. If it is from a heroic dungeon, daily. Mythic dungeon, weekly. So this is from a mythic dungeon, which means this is once per week. And all of those things are per character. Um, the only other kind of lockout is most most um, vignette rares. So like your Arathi rares, your Darkshore rares, your Oldham rares, your Veil vale rares. Those are once per day per character. Um, 
In all of these cases, you can kill a boss more than once within a lockout period by using multiple characters. The only thing in the game that locks um, account-wide is uh, pet battle dungeons. Everything else you can do multiple times if you have ults. So, um, and then... Is there, like, a good resource that just has, like, a nice table that just can remind people just in case they forget? I feel like Simple Armor used to do that. Um, but for the most part, yeah. Raids weekly, Mythic Dungeons weekly, and most things are going to be weekly. Um, heroic Dungeons are daily. If it's something that's from a dungeon that's not heroic, that you can do up to 10 times an hour. So an example would be um, Baron Rivendare's map from Strathholm, because that just drops from a normal dungeon. You can do that up to Instance Locket, which is 10 per hour. Um, and that is account-wide. So you can just run in, run out, reset, run in, run out, reset. Um, as, as much as you want, really. <sighs> Saved instance is really good for that kind of stuff. Add on used account mount attempts. I use rarity for that. Warfront rows locked to as long as your warfront is up. Um, oh shoot, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry. Um, you're right. Warfront rares are once per warfront rotation. Whereas Oldham and Veil vale Assault rares, those are once per day per character. What else was I thinking of with the once per day per character thing? I don't know. Maybe that's just Oldham and Veil. Vale. Mm. Sandy Cheek, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to this girl squad. Do you know if Azerite traits and essences will be usable in Battlegrounds after pre-patch launches? So, Azerite traits and essences are going to be usable. That's actually a good question that I don't technically know. They will continue to work in BFA zones. They will not work when we leave to Shadowlands zones. Um, or at least the essences won't. The Azerite gear might work for a while. Um, but in a Battleground, because you're not technically in a BFA zone, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but question is, if you uh, if you don't have your Azerite gear on your main, then nobody else will either, so it'll be okay. Also, pre-patch is going to be short, I bet. Uh, why don't you have Focusing Iris rank 4 in your main? Do I not? I thought I did. I don't know. Uh, how do you get Focusing Iris rank 4? <laughs> Maybe I just never went and got it. It's not something that I'm going to... You know, let me just check real quick. So I did my Shamans. We're doing Rogue next. I can always clear out the tinkerers again. <laughs> How's Mr. Betta doing? His tank looks fine. That's why. Thank you. He seems good. I was uh, I was hanging in front of his tank earlier, making some notes, and uh, he was uh, waiting for me to feed him. And then when I wouldn't do it because I'd already fed him today, uh, he was quite miffed with me. And now he's sitting on the floor, but uh, he's he's around. He seems good. I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with uh, Focusing Iris, Focusing Iris. I don't have Focusing Iris rank 4. Battle for Azeroth Keystone Master. I have Battle for Azeroth Keystone Master. <sighs> Trade wins in Boralus. <laughs> uh, I'm not the only one farming. Alright, I'm going to go back to Boralus then and maybe buy it, I guess? I don't know. It's one of those things where right now I'm like, why am I going to need a cosmetic Azerite essence? When on earth am I ever going to use that? But one of these days, it's going to be like tracked by some website and I'll be like, man, I should have done that while I could have because I have done Keystone Master because I did that for the map. So uh, Thaumaturge Vashreen is, uh, is he like asking me to? It's one of these guys. Yeah, this guy. Uh, what do you want? Huh. All right. Sure. I could also buy a 475 piece, but honestly, eh. For a, for a, eh. Yeah, I have I have pieces in all my slots. I'm fine. Uh, you're 76. Thanks for the 14 month reset. Let's uh go learn those real quick, just because. <laughs> Don't see why not. Uh, because it came up last stream, I watched. MR drops. Oh, Midnight's Rains drops on YouTube. Can confirm it does not show until you loot, so drum rolls are still appropriate. Okay. I will I will do them when I remember. <laughs> I may not remember. Hello there. Hope you are having as good as I am. What's the non-fish tree-like thing in the tank? That's just a tank ornament. Um, I like having quite tall ornaments in the tank so that there's different heights for the fish to sit if he wants to sit. Most fish don't sit, but betta fish, especially the ones with the really long fins like you see him with, uh, the fins are quite heavy and the fish didn't evolve with them normally, so sometimes they get kind of tired, like, lugging them around. And I find that they do better when you give them a place to, like, sit and rest. Um, Placat bettas with the shorter fins don't need that quite as much. What am I doing? I am turning in 
biconcavic. Concave. I, I see the word. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Um, and <laughs> there is no reason for me to learn how to pronounce that. And then we'll throw this into. Uh, you know why I like doing that is because you get a gray item worth 100 gold after you've learned an Azerite essence. <laughs> and you know that's the 100 gold I didn't have before. Okay, we're taking the rogue through. I think I'm switching to Shadow next pack. You should do it. It looks great. It looks, um... They actually just posted another update. Uh, they actually just posted another update. Devouring Plagues will now use the Ignite mechanics, so if you want to cast another one but you already have one up, you can just add it on to the existing duration, which is kind of cool. Or add its damage over time effect to add into the existing dot. And then they're reworking Legacy of the Void. I didn't look at what the new one looks like, but I wasn't too psyched about using the old one, so it's fine. Uh, I have new branches spreading on my indoor palm. Nice. She gets some assassin sales. I, there is a horrifying video on YouTube. Um, not because it's, 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 it's a psychological thriller. <laughs> uh, card wreck things for the bits. And it is by a channel called The Dave, who does these uh, very in-depth macro footage profiles of different home aquarium life. So they've got a good one on pufferfish. They have that video about guppies giving birth. They have, um, and then he has his profile on, on um, assassin snails, and it shows in vivid detail the process of an assassin snail hunting and consuming its prey. And uh, snails are not that complicated of creatures neurologically. I'm not saying we should be cruel to snails, but in the grand scheme of life and suffering, they're not that high up the ladder. But it still kind of freaked me out watching the assassin snail do its assassin snail thing. I think it would be a good solution if I had a snail infestation that I didn't have a better plan for. But I've always kind of dreamed of having a pest snail infestation in one tank and then be like, oh, you know what it's time for? It's time for me to get a dwarf buffer tank. And then I have just like a ready supply of fresh organic live food for my dwarf buffer. What am I doing? Dungeon difficulty. Mythic looks good. Right, let's go. Off to the races. I spent 30 extra minutes at the DMV because I was too anxious to ask if they'd forgotten me. Oh, 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 it, it, it hurts because it's me. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm, glad you, I'm glad you got up there, though. I'm, gl I'm glad you got it in. Uh, we still doing carry runs, I feel for you. Yeah, we're, we're in the 160s for attempts. I think we're statistically unlucky at this point, but yeah, it's not that bad yet. Andrew Judas, thank you for the three-month reset. Stay awesome, Hazel. I will, I will try. If, if this, if what I'm doing right now is a baseline for awesome, then I can do this all day. I'm not trying very hard. <laughs> if I need to do anything more aggressive than this, then we might have a problem. But if you guys just want me to, like, sit and chat, I got it. Got you. Uh, speaking of snails, I got Jerry the other day in my first Throne of Thunder run. Nice! Snick say snails in my tank since I had a bladder infestation, had to get them. What do you feed the assassin snails after your infestation's over, though? Like, aren't they going to be hungry? Are you just going to take them back or, like, find a friend that needs them? Or <laughs> I realize what the tank ornament reminds me of. It looks like the Mist Creeper enemies in Jade Forest and similar mobs. Wouldn't it be neat um, to have... I wonder if you could have a 3D printer that prints aquarium-safe resin ornaments. Because with that, you could model all kinds of things. And first of all, you can make sure they're not sharp, which is the prime thing I ask for from resin ornaments. But you could model all kinds of stuff that's from like WoW zones. Like you could do really cool themed tanks, not just WoW, but I, in, in my mind, I'm imagining those like spiny walking fleshy bone growths in Meldraxxus. If you haven't seen Meldraxxus yet, you'll understand in a month or two when we get there. Uh, you could do the coolest spooky Maldraxxus tank. You get that, you get some, like, blind cavefish, you you have a party on your hands. Uh, not serve you. thank you very much for your tip. I have a crush and a co-worker who coincidentally happens to be a skinny white girl with a handful of tattoos and blue hair. Any advice and tips? Work in a restaurant, and I doubt she plays WoW, so giving her a rare pet probably isn't an option. Um... So I think the sticking point here is not whether she plays WoW, but how awkward is it going to be if you ask out somebody that you work with and then it doesn't work out? Or if you date somebody that you work with and then it doesn't work out? There's a reason why that's generally considered a risky proposition because like even if you ask her out and she says yes and then you got you guys like 
have like five weeks of wonderful dates and then you find out that she like, I don't know, uh, freezes snails and paints with their entrails and that makes you feel uncomfortable, then you still have to see her at work every day and you have to either find a new job, uncomfortable, or, you know, that's, that's the real problem here, I think. Um, if that's not your concern, then I would express interest in a po- well, would I actually? I don't know, because that's kind of uncomfortable too. Um, if, uh... Because you still, like, you still have to work with her, <laughs> right? Sometimes work's not the place. I don't know, I'm bad at advice. Uh, Johnson, thank you for the 16 month reset, appreciate it. Uh, what materials are aquarium safe? An excellent question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I know things that are not aquarium safe. The only things that I know that are aquarium safe for sure, aside from, there's like inert stones, which is not every kind of rock, but um, inert rocks, so most sand, so typically a pool of filter sand, blasting sand, if you clean it well enough is fine. Uh, various types of driftwood, as long as you didn't collect them from outside and some things can be boiled to help disinfect them. Uh, Cyanoacrylate, which is um, gel form super glue, is, um, is also aquarium safe, so that will often be used to like fix plants to rocks or like rocks to other rocks or whatever. Uh, and aside from that, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't do a lot. You know, the cheap version is just, or the, the easy version is just to get a bunch of aquarium plants. And, uh, and, then, and then there's, there they go. <sighs> what if the opposite and they fall in love and have babies? Yeah, I'm assuming that if they fall in love and have babies and then they break up, they'll probably be able to co-parent and they probably, by the time that they've finished procreating and then having their marriage fall apart, they probably don't work at the same restaurant anymore, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> don't date a co-worker, not worth it. World's full of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I haven't ever... I haven't ever dated a coworker, I don't think, no. I didn't date a whole lot, to be honest with you. <laughs> that was one of the nice things about online dating, is that, um, is that in online relationships that didn't work out, you never had to see them again, especially if they weren't super close local. Like, you would, it was, it was very, it was not very easy, but it was easier, relatively speaking, to get over a failed relationship when you can just pretend that you dreamed it, uh, because nobody, nobody that you know knows them. Uh, however, that does also make it easier for you to get murdered. Uh, Shugan, thank you for the bits. Appreciate it. Hi, Hazel. Hello. How are you doing? Shy Deezy, thanks for the three-month reset. Don't date anyone. Just play WoW. Well, now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, you can... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You can date people and play WoW. You can date people in WoW. You can go online and try to find somebody that specifically plays WoW. <laughs> And then uh, form a relationship and eventually marry them. And then you guys can just like play WoW together. It's great. <laughs> can confirm. Have done it. Uh, Say someone said resin might do the job or something printed in silicone coated. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about silicone coating. There must be aquarium safe paints because you know, like resin ornaments that you get at like an aquarium store or whatever. Oh boy, I don't have any poisons on. Can I just put them on? Um, they are painted, although I wouldn't put it past, like, a pet store to just have items there that they're like, sure, they're safe, and they're just not. Um, they just assume that when your fish die, you're just gonna get more fish. Uh, what am I doing? Mm, fan and knives, that's a good idea. Let's do a little bit of that. Let's dodge, let's fan and knives. Um, and then lots of crimson whatever I'm doing. Buttons. Uh, more buttons. Everything's fine. <laughs> this is going great. Uh, runs with wands. Thanks for the bits. Sending RNG vibes. We can. It could. Today could be the day. This could be the attempt. This is going to be kill 168, I think. 168 attempts on Midnight's Eternal Rides. It's such a nice horse. When I get this horse, I'm going to ride it into Revendra. I want to ride my Pure Heart Courser in Bastion. I did not get my horse. Uh, my choker upgraded. Wow, Warforge. Uh, Pure Heart Courser and Bastion. Dream Runner, Wild Dream Runner in uh, in Arden Weald. I don't know what I'm gonna ride in Aldraxxus actually. Maybe my uh, my fossilized raptor from archaeology. 
And then Midnight in Revendreth, assuming that I have one by then. Uh, have you bought me some new summer shoes? That's Linda. Linsona. Is Gratz the right word? I don't know if Gratz is the right word. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exciting. That's, that's fun. Uh, while we're talking about relationships, I have a crush on a girl in my WoW guild, but her mom happens to be the GM. Worried about making it awkward if I said something. This is a valid concern. I have no good advice. I should make this very clear. I know nothing about relationships. I got extremely lucky that mine worked out. And if anything ever happens here, I'm just going to be alone for the rest of my life. I don't know how to deal with people. So I'm not good to tell you guys how to deal with each other. Not a clue. Mm. Uh, does the mount also drop in the Old Kara Raid? Old Kara Raid has a different mount. Old Kara Raid can give you the Fiery War Horses reins, and I have those. <sighs> what about Lucid Nightmare? Mm, it doesn't really match the colors. I'm thinking something undead and then either neutral color themed or like that greeny tealy undead color. Uh, holy moly, what about? Uh, Risen Mare? Ooh, that's a good point. I was thinking of maps that can also fly, but I guess I don't need to because I'm not going to be flying anytime soon in Shadowlands. Fell Steel Annihilator. That one's, I think, a little too glowy. I want something that looks, like, kind of, like, moldy. <laughs> I think the Risen Mare looks appropriately moldy. Yeah, it's even got a little bit of green on it. That's the one. That is the Maldraxxus mat right there. Oh, boy. Uh, that's gonna be Night Fae and Necrolord. So for Night Fae, this is kind of an easy one. I was just thinking the Dream Runner. Um, although I could probably be talked into something else. Um, and then... Yeah, how did you and Mr. Nutty meet? On the internet, uh, using one of those old-fashioned dating websites. One of those, like, match lookalikes. Uh, Headless Horseman's? Oh, that's pretty good, too. That's another good one. We're gonna go Dungeon Difficulty Mythic. There we go. Congrats, Deadwing Pass. Thank you. I've been, uh, working on this for a long time. It is so hard for me to restrain myself from just going on an all the things journey. You know, last night before I went to Northern Stranglethorn to farm for my, my felt robe, I went to uh, Red, Red Ridge, Red Ridge, Red Ridge, I almost said Redshire, that's not a place, Red Ridge, because uh, the quest said that I was missing a vial of chloroform, which is like an offhand, it's like a little stoppered test tube, and I'm like, well, I need that, I need everything. <laughs> I am a broken person and I need everything. So I uh, stopped what I was doing and went and did like half of the Red Ridge quest because I couldn't figure out which uh, prerequisite I needed. And then I got the I got my chloroform vial and then I was done with Red Ridge. And I did hear the fabled zone finishing all the things song. I didn't do it on stream, but I did hear it. I have tasted what victory feels like and now I will never be the same. But right as this just started watching. So I am in Return to Karazhan, which is the Legion era five man remake, the dungeon version of the old Burning Crusade Karazhan raid. Um, as seen in various Hearthstone expansions, as well as the original Warcraft movie. I am here because there is a horse and I need it. There's a horse, it's called Midnight. It drops off of Atiman the Huntsman, who's in the basement with all the horses. And it's got like a really cool appearance and it's also one of the last instance drop mounts that I don't have that I can realistically farm on all of my undergeared alts right now. Um, once Shadowlands comes out, I'll probably be able to do a little bit more. I met my husband on eHarmony and now we play WoW together. What's your rarest mount, transmog or pet? I couldn't tell you transmog because I don't have a tool that looks that up, but I can tell you that if we rule out, here we can we can pull up some data for Azeroth. Also, I found out that on data for Azeroth, if you connect your Blizzard account, you can have it recognize your alts to, um, to have it know for sure what your alt score is. And doing that made me instantly Lightbringer rank one for alts. Not because I'd, I think there are probably people in Lightbringer that have more alts than me, but just because um, they probably haven't connected their accounts to Data for Azeroth. Uh, so if I show you over here, so this is my Data for Azeroth page. If you've never seen this, I'm sorry. Uh, if I want to see my mounts, um, so this is me. These are my mounts and I can go sort by rarity and I can go collected. Uh, yeah, sort by, sort by rarity. 
and then go to the very end and I can see that my rarest mount is the Ghastly Charger, a trading card game mount obtained by 1.08% of players. If we take the unobtainable mounts out of there, then my rarest mount at that point becomes, uh, let's see. I've broken it. That's not what I meant to do. If we take the unobtainable mounts out of there and we just forget about the trading card game mounts, then uh, the <laughs> Yellow Marsh Hopper? Is that it? Yellow Marsh Hopper and Vicious War Relic are both obtained by under 3% of players, making them some of the rarest mounts. Oh no, pardon me, Pale High Direhorn. 2.16% uh, of players. That's the half million gold mount that's just a Pale Direhorn available from the same vendor that sells the Brutosaur. So those are my rarest mounts. Uh, let's do the boss real quick and then I'll take a look at pets. I'm pretty sure it is, um, I'm pretty sure it's my, it's another gold sink one. It's the Kiboko uh, Celestial Calf. Got my all seer yesterday, thanks to a very kind guild in Dalaran. I now have every raid mount drop till Shadowlands. Nice. Uh, how do you link? How, like, how did I link? Oh, um, so on Data for Azeroth, uh, you, this little drop down, view favorite characters right next to your realm and your character name. You go down there, and then you go down here, and then you click on your region, and that's going to give you a login link. Um... That does say it's going to share your some armory information of your Blizzard account with Data for Azeroth. I just thought that's fine. Also, um, my uh, drop shadow is incorrect on this stream. There we go. <laughs> Oops, the daisy do. What add-on are you using in your mounts tab? That is Mount Journal Enhanced. I paid 9.2 mil for the Gaslight -like Charger when BFA came out. I think it was a stupid move because I barely ride it anymore. What do you mean? That's such a sick mount. It flies, it runs, it's an undead mount, it's a ghost mount. I love that. That's like one of my favorite mounts. The only reason I don't ride it is because people go, what is that? And then I have to say, it's you're, it's unlikely that you can have it. <laughs> Not impossible, but unlikely. <sighs> oh yeah, so um, rare pets, rare pets, rare pets. So for that, I would do the same thing. Um, let me just find that dumb drop shadow. Stop that. Uh, rare pets. So I would go into my pets. Um, I would go sort by rarity. I would skip straight to the end. Uh, Jennifer, that just hasn't updated yet. I feel like they haven't scraped armory in a while. But before that, Jennifer, uh, Mercamus the Gladiator, which was, I don't know, BlizzCon or something like that. And then the Celestial Calf has been apparently obtained by 1.34% of players. So pretty rare. That was Mad Merchant and Dollar Run. And I think that one cost... I, I don't remember. Some amount of gold. A lot, probably. Celestial Cap. <laughs> He's cute, though. Look at him. Look at how cute he is. Is it... It's not two mil. Is it one mil? Yeah, I couldn't remember. It can't be 250k because the Prismatic Bobble was 250k. Yeah, I have the Hyacinth Macaw. I think I bought it a long time ago, back when it was still really expensive. And then another one dropped for me later, and I was kind of kicking myself that I didn't wait. Uh, were your family supportive of your decision to relocate to Canada? Yeah. My, I mean, my family that I'm close to is pretty small. Um, I'm not in an immediate touch with most of my extended family, so I really only had to tell my <laughs> nuclear family. And my mom is the best woman on the planet Earth, and she's always just wanted whatever I wanted because she just wants me to be happy. Uh, and she trusts my judgment, which is a magical feeling that I wish everybody could have with their parents. Uh, so she was sad that I was leaving because I'm farther away and she can't see me as often, but she's, uh, she's come down to visit a few times. She's, she likes Mr. Nutty quite a bit and, uh, uh, all good there. Mercamus was an arena tourney thing from the tournament realm. I don't remember. I must have done it because I have it. I don't remember. Spider-Man from Virgin's really cool. I like that one a lot. That was what I spent all my gold for right at the end of Legion. That was where the rest of my Legion gold went. Thanks for sharing data for Azeroth. I hope you guys all enjoy it. Oh, it's THE Shugen! Ah! Yo, you've ruined my life! <laughs> this website is, is, is the worst thing that I've ever enjoyed. Uh, it's great, is, is, is what I mean to say. It's just, uh... <laughs> uh, difficult for people with impulse control to manage their attachment to. Uh, rarest pets of Empiric Battling from BC. Just loot the bow, Nasal. Yeah, we, um, we are attempt 168 or so, coming right up. My data for Azeroth completion score went down. I'm sad, oh no. I've had a lot of fun um, ch 
sharing it with my my guild or my guild shared it with me and we were all like looking at our profiles and now we're all competing for lightbringer ranks like we keep checking in and be like yep check me out check me out check me out uh so between that and all the things i'm now trying to get like all the transmog <sighs> off topic i hope you and your family is safer and healthier i'm from portland most of my family is there hope everything's better now um, the air is back to back to normal. The air is fantastic now, which is great. Um, it may not stay that way forever because, as I understand it, the fire is still on fire, but we've had a lot of rain that should have slowed it down. We're probably out of the woods for this particular fire season, um, which I am very grateful for. It's nice to be able to just open a window and, and breathe. Um, I would not be surprised to see that to see wildfires come back in a similar way in the future, so I'm just... Uh, you know, stocked up on air fresheners, and maybe I'll have, you know, some of the planning that I did this year during wildfire season might come in handy one day. You know, I didn't have to evacuate, but I did make some evacuation lists so that, and I now know, like, if I, if somebody said you have 20 minutes to leave your house, I now know where all my documents are, and I know what I would grab and in what order, and I, I have, like, a handle on what would need to happen, so I'm sure that's prep that I can use again later if I have to. Any pre patch date? At least a date we can expect? No. One day. Um, some people think the 29th, some people think the 6th. I don't know. Sometime between now and Shadowlands coming out. It'll, it'll, it'll happen eventually. There has to be some sticking point that... There, there's got to be a reason. I, I bet you they would like to get it out on the 29th, but there's something that's just not perfectly ready in some way. Otherwise, they would have told us by now. Yeah, the PTR did update to a release candidate build, so we are getting there. We just don't have a hard and fast date just yet. Got my 250 mount achievement eight days ago. About to hit 272. Super lucky. Nice. Uh, fellow Canuck here from Ontario. Watch your pet training, taming, and leveling videos. The big question, is Dragonblade still the best place to power level, and where is the best place to collect pet charms? All right. Uh, attempt number 169. Mm. Mm. Uh, no good. Maybe 170. Dragonblade! Blade is no longer the best place to level pets. Um, it's not bad, but it's uh, it's not bad, but it's not as good as grinding two pet strategies. So if you basically wait until pet bonus week and then just do laps of Draenor and uh, Mop Tamers, um, if you can if you can beat them with two pet teams, that's going to be substantially faster, even with the travel time. And then even better than that, if you can wait for a super squirt day, I didn't make the name. If you can wait for a super squirt day and then just grind the squirt pet battle in your garrison, that has no travel time and you can do it all the live long day and get the rest of your pets leveled, no problem. Uh, it's exceedingly boring, but you know, <laughs> it's a sacrifice that we're willing to make. Uh, right now they are concerned with Cadgar. Server merger destroyed many people's accounts. Oh dear. Oh dear. That sucks. Uh, how do you sync your account? I have 17 ults, but my score is only 120. So, uh, over, do, 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 um, on Data for Azeroth, up by the Realm and Character Name segment, you've got, like, this little, uh, downward arrow for favorite characters, and then if you click down on Battle.net Login, and then you click your region link, um, whichever region you happen to be, then you can log in, and that will grab your actual character data. Up until that point, it just tries to guess what your alts are by, um, looking at timestamps of achievement earned, things like that. Uh, Mad Season Lost Characters. They they have to restore that stuff, right? Like, I can't imagine how how stressful that is to wait for them to do it. They have, like, they have to. What if they can't is a horrifying thought, but, like, geez Louise. Yikes, it'll be restored. That's, that's, like, they have to. You can't. People people will lose more faith than they already have if they know that they're living in a world where your progress can just get obliterated and they can't fix it. They've always been able to fix it. Um, even back like when whenever expansion that was that came out that like reset a bunch of uh, demon pet names for warlocks, they still fixed it. Uh, what is this cam on the left side? That is uh, my pet camera. That is right now it's a betta fish cam. Um, containing Ori, Metafish. He is presently, where is he? Uh, he's on the bottom, I can see his reflection. I can't see him. He's, he's hanging out of the back. Uh, sometimes he'll swim around at the front. If I, if I catch him up, I'll, I'll switch cameras and show you guys. Uh, knock, knock. Knock, knock, there we go. Uh, make sure that I'm on Dungeon Difficulty Mythic, very good. 
I can't believe 8% of users had the Brutosaur. That's a large number. I was impressed. I was impressed. I fully believe that if they had never decided to take it off the vendor, you probably would have been five years before the number caught up to that point because of how much gold it was. Limited availability is the biggest motivator <laughs> that they possibly could have given for people to try to get that thing. I bet you there's more Brutosaurs in the world now than there ever would have been during Shadowlands. It would have taken a long time for it to catch up to that number. Uh, Marmo, thank you very much for the 16 month resub. Summer is ending and the stream is going back to being my studying companion. Glad to do it. And Spooks had a brand new sub about 12 minutes ago. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Even if they fix this, you can still lose your progress at any moment. I feel like if, you know, somehow everything on WoW was just gone, just somehow, I don't think I would be that upset. I think I would just find, I would look, I would, I, would, I mean, it would suck, but I would probably be like, okay, what's now? <laughs> Clearly, I'm not going to play again. I would not redo my progress. That's not how you do it. If, like, they accidentally just wiped all the data and you could do it again, I wouldn't start over. I would probably quit gaming and go, like, I don't know, cultivate turnips. In prestige mode. <laughs> yeah, new game plus. New WoW plus. I boycott bye-bye. Yeah, I would I would quit. I wouldn't quit in a terribly angry way. I'm assuming that Blizzard would never do that on purpose. It would have been some kind of horrible tragic accident that's incredibly unlikely, but you know, this is a theoretical. Um, I would just move on. <laughs> uh, Thunderhawk the Lost, thank you for the two-month reset. Love the YouTube. Keep it up. Thank you. I'd like to see you play Among Us. I've had some people request me to play Among Us, and I've had people separately request that I never play Among Us. Um, I think where I'm at is that I am incredibly unlikely to play Among Us because I am uh, averse to talking to people. <laughs> if you've watched a few of my streams, you'll know that it's, inc it's very unusual for me to talk to anybody. My favorite thing to do, at least in stream on WoW, is just to hang out all by my lonesome and do stuff all by myself. I barely even do viewer activities. There's barely anything ever happening here. Um, and I feel like actually talking to people on stream, hard ask. You play Animal Crossing? I did, I did. I played New um, Horizons for a couple of months on lunch and I don't play currently. I got to a point where I was like grinding bells but I didn't really know what I needed them for anymore. I'd kind of bought everything that I wanted. I had my house the way that I wanted. My island was good enough and then I kind of put it down. And I was thinking that one day, you know, if I ever have like a, some kind of an injury that I need to recuperate from, or, you know, I'm just like bedridden for six weeks or something like that. I don't know. Um, if I ever have a really good excuse to just like sit down and play a game for a few weeks and I need something on console, I might start over again. I might like start at Fresh Island, but um, for now I'm just focused on WoW. I enjoy Among Us, but I don't think it's your style of game, at least not as a stream activity, maybe private friend groups. <sighs> yeah, I um, I understand that a, a core feature or a core ability that you need to be successful at Among Us is the ability to lie with a straight face, and I'm not good at that. I have no poker face. I have zero game. Um, I am, like, I'll, I'll just start giggling immediately. It's not going to be even a question. <laughs> Incredibly fun with close friends, but definitely a social activity. Yeah, and then if I was playing with, like, other streamers, they're probably people that I would like to be friends with, but don't know that well yet. And then the first thing you gotta do is lie to them? Mm. <laughs> I don't know about all that. <sighs> I really like playing um, every once in a blue moon, late, late at night, if there's just people hanging out in our, in our private Discord. Um, somebody will kick up a game of Scribble.io, and that's very funny. <laughs> that's always a really great time. I really like that one. Uh, but, you know, stuff that you do, stuff that you do, like, privately with friends, right? Uh, let's see. That's what somebody who's good at lying would say. Uh, the ability to lie is only required 10% of the time. Straight face isn't needed to dissolve because nobody will see your face. I see. Hardly do any group stuff in WoW because I don't want to talk to people. 
I don't, I actually really enjoy the group activities I do. I just don't do them on stream. I think that the way I play WoW on stream is sort of a very specific kind of calming thing that I do with my hands. I, I, I view this, this thing that we're doing together, kind of like, you know, how, um, how adults will sometimes get together and they'll have coffee and somebody will be knitting and they'll just be like catching up and chatting, but it's just something to do with your hands while you're 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 chatting and you're catching up this is we're all having like a nice little coffee or, or tea time and this is my knitting <laughs> with the added with the added excitement of maybe a mount will drop in it probably won't but maybe it could right um it's just like an extra an extra topic it's not really central to what's going on here if i was doing anything more involved or more exciting then i wouldn't it would take away from my capacity to chat which is really what i'm here for um, I really like playing WoW socially with my friends and being in Discord and doing group content and keys and raiding and whatnot, but I don't think that content works very well for stream because the people that I play with are not streamers and they're not online personalities and they understandably enjoy their privacy and, you know, they want to hang out with their friends and I want to hang out with my friends when it's not a product, you know, it's not for content, it's just because it's Friday night and we have some spare time and we're going to enjoy each other's company. Uh, so th they're just kind of, I, I keep them separate, I think, for that reason. I have never played Among Us, no. <sighs> do you raid up to Mythic or maybe chilling till AOTC? Um, I do not do Mythic. I raid um, normal, we clear normal and then we do heroic. And then once we don't need heroic anymore, we just kind of take a break until the next tier. So I have my head of the curve. I've had it for a while. Um, we cleared we cleared through Nihilotha when it first came out. But uh, I'm not, I've never really wanted to raid Mythic. It kind of asks from me more than I'm willing to give it, and I have deemed the things it's offering me in return not worth it. Um, I like the casual atmosphere that we're able to have while just heroic raiding and not needing to worry about like rosters or um, too much min-maxing. You can kind of get away with doing whatever you feel like as long as you're paying attention and you know playing half decently. We can get through heroic. Uh, attempt number 170 coming right up. Drumroll! Oh, sorry. Spectral Apprentice. I didn't mean to ignore you. Drumroll! No. Maybe 171. Mm. A knitting club would be nice. Do you think you'll appreciate this red horse more since it's taking a spicy number of attempts? Absolutely. Although, we're not in spice territory yet. Talk to me when we're 200 plus. Uh, what is she doing while streaming? Does she do things like viewer runs or just streaming while playing WoW? Just streaming while playing WoW. I very rarely do anything that, um, that involves, <laughs> involves viewers now and then, you know, not never, but pretty rarely. I think the stream works relatively well as a podcast. The screen is somewhat optional. If there's anything really important that happens on the screen, it'll probably make it as a highlight. I have some extra apple bits left over. I cut these up for lunch, but then I had like a really big bowl of miso soup with like really big chunks of tofu in it. And then I wasn't hungry to finish all my apples. I just left it on my desk because I figured I would eat it at some point. And now it's not cold anymore. I don't like cold, it hurts my teeth. Strana is like my favorite alt. <laughs> He's the only male character I have. I should have more. I might change a few of my characters when Shadowlands comes around. My husband does play well. Not as much as me. He's more of a seasonal player. He'll play when there's new content. Um, he's generally a lot more um, discerning with his games. He's more critical than I am because he has like more games than he plays. If he's not having fun in WoW, he can usually go play like Path of Exile or they spend some time playing Monster Hunter, whatever, um, online universe unlimited <laughs> unleashed i don't know i didn't play that one um there's like always other games going on over there uh, black desert he plays a good amount of black desert so he he's more of like a like a variety gamer and he'll swap between based on what he's having fun with whereas i just live in wow all the time um so i'm i'm not as i'm not as concerned with the details just a wow streamer i don't really play other stuff um at least not on stream um off stream i will play hearthstone battlegrounds i enjoy 
putting on a Hearthstone Battleground while I eat like my breakfast or my lunch or something if I have time. Um, those are fun. I'm very, I'm not great, but it's just kind of a nice thing to have on. Because <laughs> Lich is just here to give hugs with his outfit. Uh, the weapon illusion of my two-handed sword, Frosty? It can't just be called Frosty. What is that called? No, wrong now. I'm looking for this one. Winter's Grasp. Pardon me. Um, I don't remember what that's from. It's probably from... Well, now I can look it up. Illusion Winter's Grasp. I'm looking it up for you. Uh, Feast of Winter Vale, contained in the Stolen Present and Smoky Wood Pastor's Special Gift. It's a Winter Vale appearance. Um, it's also fantastic. <laughs> also, he has a backpack. Raid Dungeon Difficulty. There we go. I mostly play Alliance. I have a handful of Horde characters that I use whenever there's something that I need to specifically unlock on Horde side, but for the most part, I main Alliance. Uh, super low drop rate for it. Yeah, I, I was thinking a Hoon, and I couldn't remember if that was part of Winterville. I guess it must be. Christmas event only. Yeah, I like that one. You know what I never showed you? I did my nails on Monday, and you don't have to care about my nails, but I am going to show you. I did my nails on Monday, and uh, I was going to show you yesterday, but then I completely forgot. I was just so uh, focused on mat runs or distracted or whatever it was, and I never showed you. And I actually really like these ones. So let's, uh, I'm going to very slowly chop my way through the rest of this single trash pole because this death knight does no damage um i did i've been trying to to come up with two-toned manicures that use two different colors but still kind of look like a cohesive thing i'm not very good at it but this is like a little bit better let me see if i can get a focus on it uh yeah so you've got like two nails that are just like a foresty green and then on these two you've got like a i, I did like a little white leaf stamp and then I tried using my dotting tool. I wanted the green dots to be smaller. They're too big, but it was my first try. And then on the thumbnail, um, I got a, like a little moon stamp. And then I tried to hand do a chevron using striping tape, which was like a really big pain in the butt um, and didn't work very well. I won't show you this one because it's worse, but uh, same, same concept. I, there has to be a better way to do that. I don't have any nail vinyls. I only have striping tape, um, but I like the idea. Um, I've been having more fun doing my nails since I started sketching out the plan for it ahead of time before I start so that I actually like visually know what steps I'm going to take because otherwise sometimes it gets away from me. You can try for midnight once per week per character. So because I have 18 tunes already to run it, I can do it 18 times a week. But if you've just got the one character, then just once per week. <sighs> uh, strong Hazel vibes. I'm, I'm having a very big blue and green face. <laughs> when I was like, not even a teenager, like a little kid, like 11 and below, I would have like color phases where for like two years at a time, I would be like, my favorite color is purple. And then I would have purple everything. And I would just choose only purple pants and purple sweaters and purple notebooks and purple like school supplies and just call myself the purple monster. And then like three years later, it would be like, it is time for blue. And then I would just like have massive phases. And I'm having that again at the, um, at the sprightly age of 28, I've decided that teal, so anywhere in the blue-green thing, the blue-green stratosphere, uh, really works for me. Except that now, instead of choosing school supplies, I'm choosing, like, home decor. But I figure, you know, the sky's blue, aquariums are kind of blue, uh, plants are green. So I already have blue and green everywhere. I may as well just get everything else to match. The key is to get enough neutral colors around so that you're not just living in a, uh, you know, the bug's life, but uh, in your house. Uh, should post old manicures in the art discord? You should. I like doing my nails like this, but my hands aren't steady enough to do designs. So the actual, like the, f the leaves and the little moon thing, those are stamping. So I'm not freehanding that because I have really shaky hands too. Um, I'm not very coordinated, but, and I do a lot of cleanup. Like when I finish doing my, my nails, my hands are like covered in nail polish. It gets almost up to my elbows. Um, not like coated, but just like little bits and pieces of it here and there. Um, so I stamp the fine designs, and then uh, I don't freehand very much. Uh, the Zodiac, thank you for the two-month reset. Appreciate it. How long you on for? Another hour. Yeah. Apples are kind of sour.
I really do no damage at all. <laughs> this is sad. I should switch specs, but I don't want to. September is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, and the color for that is teal. I did not know that. That works. Was that boss drop that staff? Um, I don't know, but I used to know where that dropped, because I used to use that on my mage. I don't know anymore. I'm no help whatsoever. Um, she drops... So, Opera Hall. So that was Wicket. And the loot from that... Uh, let's go all classes. So, no. No staff. Uh, no weapon at all, actually. Just uh, relics and then some, some other stuff. Bet you somebody in chat knows, though. Rock to Ninja with a two-month reset. Appreciate it. Also, a Macri. Also with a two-month reset. Can't wait for corruption to be gone. Oh, man. It's gonna be good. I'm glad. I have, like, an extra, um... I have an extra... One of those little purple box thingies. I don't know. The things you use to apply corruption onto your gear. I bought one more, but I ran out of slots to put it on, so it's just, like, sitting in my bags, and I don't care. It's fine. How long does it take to get one of the cool backpack cloaks? Not too much time if you have been playing 8.3. It costs... It, it costs 5,000 mementos, which you get from doing Horrific Visions, but you also need to have already purchased all of the Horrific Vision research. So if you're starting from scratch, it's going to take you probably a week or two of doing Horrific Visions to, like, get caught up. I mean, maybe maybe more than that, because you'll need the entries for it. You're going to have to do quite a few visions to get caught up and get the research done. But if you already completed your research tree, you can get enough mementos for that in one or two visions um, easily. It's not that expensive compared to, like, the Wicked Swarmer mount. Uh, this mog freaks me out. It looks weird. He looks phenomenal. I think my favorite part is the gigantic feet. Um, the, <laughs> the slippers on this. First of all, it's weird to see a Draenei wearing feet, right? Because usually when you put on boots, their hooves stick out the bottoms. So it's weird to see a Draenei in slippers, and then they are so, like, unholy big. It's just, it's just silly. I love it a lot. Mm hmm. 200 plus tries and Shackled Urzel. Wish it dropped. Is this a pretty good Maldractus now? Good luck. The staff is from Doomlord Kazak in BC or a Shadowmoon Valley questline. Okay. Shackled Urzel is sick. My sister hates it, but I love it. And the fact that she hates it makes me want it more. I like that mount quite a bit. I, I, I enjoy mounts that are shocking because we're playing WoW. It's T for team. They're not going to add anything that's actually going to personally upset me. So anything that's like on the on the slightly edgier side of the spectrum, like the Urzel or the Spider Mount, I, I usually enjoy those. They're kind of fun. Love the onesie so much, I wish I'd gone to BlizzCon. They sold it with the with the virtual ticket kit as well. Um, but yeah, I am really glad that I went, especially given that... <laughs> I don't know, like, I know this year we're getting BlizzCon line in February, um, and we'll have to... It remains to be seen what that's going to look like, aside from just displaying the contest and then probably having some streamed announcements about the various games. But I don't know if they would ever do an in-person BlizzCon or what it would look like if they ever get back to doing in-person BlizzCons because I don't know, I don't know, you know, what that looks like in a world with coronavirus. Like, you, you know, you can say in 2021 or 2022, but um, hard, hard to really say when it would be safe enough to make it a good idea. I may never go again. Uh, currently an 82 attempt for the Shackled Urzel. When is the community vote mount supposed to come? Uh, quarter 1, 2020. So sometime in the first, like, three months or so of, uh, or 2021, rather. So January, February, March-ish, like, spring or so of next year. So after Shadowlands releases, but, uh, still relatively early. Lol stuff, thank you for the six-month reset. Hazel already has the tree mount in the fish aquarium. All right, attempt 171. Coming right up. I have a tiny piece of apple skin still in my mouth, and I feel like that's a choking hazard. I should try to finish that. <laughs> fruit's great, though. You should eat more fruits and vegetables. Whole grains. Good stuff. Makes you awake. <laughs> I used to complain all the time about being really tired in the middle of the day and, like, having to nap and not being able to make it through the day. And part of that, I think, was just, like, regular, you know, 
bog standard depression. But I think another part of it was I was uh, eating like way too many carbs and like really refined carbs like pastas and white breads and whatnot. And I would just carb crash really hard midday and then just be like unable to function. And it turns out I didn't need to, I, I just, you know, get some, get some brown rice in ya. Get some veggies, eat some broccoli. I did not get the mount. I got another hoof plate. That was a dip 171. Eat some carrots. You ever, uh, you ever like roast some carrots? Air fry some carrots? Toss them up, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt? Mm. <sighs> I resub for 14 months earlier, but I continue to show one or two months in a row. Any ideas to fix that? I have no idea. I see you with the, um, continue to show one or two in a row. I don't know. I don't see the resub. Oh, oh, there it is. It was, uh, I think we saw it. I saw, I saw the 14 months. Um, let's see, carrots and hummus? I'm not worried about calories. I'm worried about nutrients. You gotta use some plant matter, get some fiber. Uh, what am I doing? I'm getting on my next character. Garlic, good. I was, um... Mm. I was eating my miso soup for lunch, right? And in it, I uh, sliced up some green onions. Side note, ever since I sharpened my knife again, it's so much fun to chop stuff up for food. Oh my goodness, I can make the thinnest slices. It's so satisfying. If you've never sharpened your kitchen knives, you're not living. You're not living. You have to. Anyways, it's not that hard. You can learn it on YouTube. I did. But, um, so I'm, I slice up my green onion, throw it in my soup. Decent soup. It's not perfect. Um, I don't have any dashi stock, which kind of makes miso soup. So it's really just like miso paste and, and uh, <laughs> miso paste and uh, some some sliced nori and some tofu and some green onions. And it works well enough. It's not perfect, but it's fine. And I was eating it. I'm like, this is nice. I wonder if like, I eat a good amount of green onions. They're one of the veggies that we get basically every time we go to the grocery store because they're cheap and I just put them in a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, I know that they're yummy, but like on a scale of good for me, where do they fall? Because occasionally I get curious about like mentally ranking fruits and vegetables. I'm sure the correct answer is eat a variety of things and don't just eat one thing. But I was also curious, you know, if it was like, where, where does it fall on nutrients? And then I was reading about, about the different benefits of like the allium family. So, you know, your green onions, your regular onions, your garlic, good stuff, garlic's great for you. And then I ended up on this article about onions and cooked onions versus raw onions and also just like onions being real good for you. And this is like a educational article. It's posted by a university somewhere. But for some reason, it has a comment section because everything on the internet has a comment section. And I scroll down and there's this dude and he's commented twice. And I, hang on, um, I just, I, I need to double check. I literally took a screenshot to send with my friend because it was just so cute. Uh, he commented twice, his first comment, and these are recent, this is, these are not old onion comments. He, he said this like March of this year. His first one said, love onion. I love onions. And then a second one said also, Onions make you stay young, feeling young too. This guy's just so hyped on onions that he is posting comments on an onion related article posted by a university, .edu website. That dude's living life. Also, he loves onions. You know, you do you. Um, now I feel sad that I don't love onions more. I enjoy cooking with them, but apparently raw onions are quite good for you and I just can't deal with raw onions. I mean, I could, but like, mm, I don't know. <sighs> They're only okay. Uh, Kalani, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, guys. Um, I'm talking about onions. Thoughts? <laughs> mushrooms are raw. You don't take my mushrooms from me. <laughs> I slice them up. I cook them with a little garlic, a little ginger, a little soy sauce. A little bit of rice wine. Throw some cabbage in there, slice up some cabbage. And then um, and then I cook some vermicelli, little glass noodles. And then I stuff dumplings with them and then I steam them and they're delicious. Yeah, not raw onions. I don't like raw onions in salad. I don't like them on sandwiches. They're just like too bright. They're too loud. I want to be onion man. <laughs> um, I just eat mushrooms raw. Now raw mushrooms, that is where 
I will not- I will not shame you for living your life, but I cannot walk down that path with you. They are too rubbery. They are too spongy. They are too bouncy. Um, they are fun to imagine yourself jumping on if they were magnified to a great size, but I don't want to eat them. But cooked onion- cooked mushrooms, however, now we're talking. Syncopatics, I am deeply sorry that you swallowed a slug as a child. That sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, my significant other is hoping I get out of my kimchi phase soon. Nah, 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 nah. Kimchi's great. Fermented foods. Great. Good stuff. Good for you. Spicy. Or not spicy, but you know. They add some life to your food. Get you some kimchi. Get you some sauerkraut. Get you some miso paste. I am a pescatarian. That is true. I like mushrooms on pizza. I like mushrooms on pizza. My go-to for pizza is something with like, you know, you get like your mushrooms and your feta cheese, maybe like some spinach, maybe some sun-dried tomato, maybe some gorgonzola cheese, maybe some goat's cheese, maybe not all of these things on one pizza, but you know, anything like maybe some olives, anything in that kind of like salty sort of Mediterranean um, genre is usually a good call for me. Although I don't like thin crust pizza. Like if I'm eating pizza, the gratuitous amount of fluffy crust is like half the point. <laughs> Thin crust pizza is just a fancy cracker. It's delicious, but it's not what I wanted when I decided I was going to eat pizza. Um, barbecue on pizza uh, doesn't upset me, but because I don't eat uh, chicken or pork or beef or anything like that, there's very few things that you would add a barbecue sauce to. I guess you could put like a barbecue tuna on a pizza. Um, it would be a weird thing to do, but I would eat it. Kimchi, I can't do sauerkraut and I'm German. I am, um, I was a slow, slow comer to sauerkraut. I had to learn to love kimchi first and then kind of see, oh, apparently I needed that transmog. See sauerkraut as like a slightly, just like a different form of kimchi. They're both fermented cabbage. They're just done differently. And I will fully admit kimchi is more fun, but uh, sauerkraut has its place. My wife is suffering because we recently discovered that I'm allergic to wheat. Bread is her favorite food group. She feels guilty eating it in front of me. Oh no, I mean, yeah, it's something you, it's something that you can get used to, but it's that's that's really rough. Um, ultimate question: pineapple on pizza. I am here to support people living their own lives and putting whatever they want on their pizza. You know, I I am not gonna put it on my pizza because it does not go with my goat's cheese and sun dried tomatoes that I want. But don't let me tell you how to live your life. How many attempts are you at now? We're in the one seventies. We're in the one seventies. Uh, the rainbow stream behind my character is from my prismatic bottle toy. Transmog collection mog, and you have a link to a video you've done. I'm sure you could ask this a lot. Uh, it's my own fault. I haven't updated my add-on video since the beginning of BFA. Um, I am just now, like as of this week, using all the things. I still have mixed feelings on it, but I can't go back now. Uh, so all the things is the add-on that told me and played a little sound when I just got that transmog. I'm using Rarity to count my uh, mount attempts for, like, uh, Midnight and other mounts like it. I also like third-party websites. I like Simple Armory. I like Data for Azeroth. You have to do Opera before you go to Stables. Yeah. Uh, door won't open. Door won't open until you do Stables. Um, or until you do Opera, rather. You, it's a little bit faster if you go straight through the other side of Opera, but there's more trash. And because my characters are so undergeared, I find it easier to backtrack. Um, for a while, for a long time I was doing it the other way, but, um, people were telling me to try this way and I do think it's faster for me. You can simplify the tooltip greatly. You can turn off the announce sound. So the tooltip I did simplify m much. There's gotta be a better way to format that sentence. I did greatly simplify my all the things tooltip. That's a better sentence. However, I uh, will not turn off the sound because it is delightful and that's what's going to make it so addicting. If they're, they're, if you read, um, there's plenty of psychology books about motivation and about habit forming and about all kinds of related topics. They're usually geared at pe talking people into learning how to do things they don't want to do. Um, and a very key component of those things is the reward part of the circuit where you are celebrating having done a thing. And the music as part of that is a very key part in forming um, habits or addictions, depending on how harsh of a word you want to use. But uh, uh, I absolutely <laughs> need that because uh, it's fun. 
Uh, do you have head cannons for your characters? A few of them, not too many of them, really. Uh, it's making me giggle to myself every time Hazel admits she uses all the things with that little sigh. I used to have that exact same attitude about the Instant Pot. I, when I first got my Instant Pot pressure cooker, not sponsored, I was so mad because everybody that has one is like a cultist about it. They are so evangelical about their Instant Pots that I thought there was some weird kind of cult going on. And I'm still not convinced that there's not. So I really didn't want to get one because it just seemed like the trendy thing to do. And I am a strong, independent, modern person that makes their own decisions independent of their friends. Or at least that's what I thought at the time. And uh, <laughs> I finally end up with an instant pot. I didn't even buy it. My husband bought it. And then I try it and I'm like, fine, it's great. It cooks food really fast. It makes it really easy to make things that I make all the time. It replaces my rice cooker. Fine, you win. <laughs> and, uh, and it is huge, but it does deserve the counter space. And I had a similar kind of period of, um, of grumpy acceptance, I think, for that. So just because I hate something doesn't mean I can't learn to live with it. Uh, attempt number 172. No good. Maybe 173, but we're almost at a chance for the day, I think. I want to hear your Instant Pot stories. I'm in the same boat. I got one. Hardly use it. I use it for rice, um, and I use it for beans, and those are things that I wouldn't do elsewhere. Like, we got rid of the rice cooker, because my old rice cooker used to burn rice anyways. So I make white rice whenever I'm making sushi, and I make brown rice for meal prep, or for, like, tacos, or for basically anything else that I'm going to use rice with. So I do that pretty often, and then I will mass cook black beans also for meal prep. I'll kind of put them in containers with the brown rice, and then I can just add like other veggies and stuff to that and call it lunch. Um, so I use it for that. <sighs> I also, those are really the only things I use it for now. When I first got it, I was being much more adventurous. I've made cheesecakes in the Instant Pot. Um, I used to do like seasoned sweet potatoes in it. I would like slice sweet potato planks, and then I would do them with like oil and like cardamom and ginger and like warm spices and cook those into the sweet potato and then have those like on sandwiches or just as a side dish all by themselves. Um, but we've been using the air fryer a bit more since we got it. I do use both of them. <laughs> and now that I have a bread maker, I'm really too far gone over the having appliances on my counter world. My husband does play well. Got an instant pot to make better sushi rice. The people that were like, do you need Razzies? Freaking me out. People tell me all the time about how they use their instant pots to make yogurt. I just don't like yogurt that much. Uh, and Luna Ray with their 11 month reset. Thank you very much. Okay, off I go. How many 120s do I have? 18 of them on this server and then another couple um, on Horde. I do have all of the BFA assault mounts. Uh, what does your husband do? Uh, like, I mean, he gets up in the morning, he puts on his pants one leg at a time, presumably. He, uh, he has a job. I will not be too specific because, uh, you know, privacy. But um, it, is, it is a job that is with other people at a company that he is able to do from home. So he's working from home. <laughs> Some of your favorite meals to cook? Depends on how much energy I have within my body. If I have a lot of life force left over at the end of the day, my favorite things to do are sushi or sweet potato sandwiches, which is what I did last night. So for the sweet potato thing, I posted this recipe on Discord after I decided that it was something that I like to eat. I don't think I invented it, but, um, I had not heard of it before I decided to just make something kind of fancy feeling. But basically I will uh, roast or instant pot uh, planks of sweet potatoes with herbs or without herbs, totally fine. I will separately caramelize some onions and then deglaze them in a little balsamic vinegar. I will separately make like a fake aioli by combining mayo with pressed fresh garlic, salt, pepper, and lemon juice. And then I will toast some ciabatta buns and kind of layer it up also including some spinach, I'll want a little mozzarella on the bun, and I'll put some feta cheese in the sandwich. So you got like toasted ciabatta bun, aioli, sweet potato, caramelized onions, spinach, little more aioli, uh, feta cheese, 
melted mozzarella on a toasted ciabatta bun on the top, and that is your sandwich. It gives me that, like, burger vibe, except that without any meat in it. It's kind of fussy to make, but it's not that hard, especially once you get the hang of the timings of everything, and it doesn't make too many dishes, and it's delicious. So I did that last night. And then for sushi, um, sushi is just kind of finicky because I like slicing things really evenly for it. Um, so I, what I like to do for that is I will grab my AirPods and I will put in some music and I'll just kind of like give myself like 45 minutes or so in the kitchen to just kind of like bop around and, uh, and get everything all, all together and, and nice and like listen to some, some tunes. I very much enjoy listening to music while I'm cooking. My dream is to one day have a house where I don't have like adjacent neighbors. We're in an apartment, so I don't want to like blast music that other people could hear. But one day I want to have like a smart speaker in the living or in the kitchen so that I can just kind of like put my music on the speakers and like uh, party, but also cook. Ms. Gadget, thank you for the nine month reset. Appreciate it. Also next gamer with a 13 month. Uh, this is not Kira on my shirt. No, this is a Vindictive Gladiator Silver Kitty. Oh, Grand Head Kid, Mr. Moffat. Moffat on. I'll tell him that he might like that. Uh, as divine. You should try it. I don't think it's a health food, but you know, it includes sweet potatoes. Those are a great source of beta carotenes. It includes onions. Those are good for you. It includes mayo. That's not good for you, but you know, not everything can be perfect. <laughs> uh, do you have the recipe anywhere? It's, uh, I posted it once upon a time to the, we have a recipe, um, channel in my discord, in the Squirrel Squad discord, and I posted it there once, but like, you might have to scroll up a bit. It was a while ago. I was going to say that you used your airpods to make sushi. <laughs> it's apple a little sour. I'm kind of hurt. <laughs> it's got this week Janus Mount and Mail Muncher. Congrats. Found it by searching sweet potato. There you go. Yeah, it's a good time. Oh, we did, um, I have the most first world problem ever. Like, the most privileged problem you've ever heard of in your life. We did, um, curbside pickup on our grocery store this week because we needed a ton of groceries. Like, we hadn't gotten groceries for a while because of the smoke from the fires. So by the time we finally went back to get groceries, we needed like a lot of stuff. And, uh, and I was um, exhausted and uh, I was sick at the time. Um, I was still sleeping off my cold, so I didn't want to go to the store. So I just helped Mr. Nutty put together like the list on the curbside pickup thing and then he went to go get it. But one of the things that you accept um, when you get that done or similarly when you have groceries delivered is that they might make substitutions. And usually when they do the delivery, not that many things get substituted and they're usually fine. But this time, um, they substituted, and um, it was probably um, probably my fault. I didn't, like, review. I'm sure they give you a chance to review the substitutions and reject them or whatever. I didn't do that. I just kind of hope for the best. <laughs> but I had ordered um, one bag of bread flour and separately a bag of all-purpose flour because I needed both for different reasons. And then they gave me two bags of all-purpose flour. I would have preferred just the one. And then I ordered ciabatta buns because there's one brand that I really like, and the rest of it is not worth eating. And uh, I ordered ciabatta buns and they gave me brioche buns instead. And that's just not what I, that's just not, it's just not going to do. I mean, we'll do, we'll eat them. But um, I now need to learn how to make my own ciabatta buns because I've understood that my life is an unstable, you know, I'm just walking on a tightrope if I am not in control of my own ciabatta bun source. I need to, I need to have the keys to that castle in my own hands. So I got to learn how to make those. Um, I am planning on making use of my bread machine for the, with the dough cycle, and then uh, I think to make them really crusty, you gotta like add extra humidity to your oven, so like pans of water like spritzing with with like a water spray, something like that. I'll figure it out. <sighs> uh, I have a mild petty habit of courtesy matching my neighbors. They like loud music, all reciprocated kind. Of. Oh man. We have decently well insulated walls, so you can tell when somebody's listening to music or watching a movie or whatever, but you can't always hear, like, the words, which is fine. Um, so I don't, I don't really mind. Sometimes I like to try to guess what they're doing. There's a, I think somebody likes to play uh, FPS games behind uh, one of the walls in our place, because sometimes I'll be hanging out there and I'll hear the sound that, you know, can only be like gunfire but like they can't be watching a war movie for that long because it goes on for like hours and hours and hours so i'm assuming that's like call of duty or something 
Um, well, got my lawn boy this week and then got four more mounts. Never get mounts, so happy. Congrats. What mount are you farming and return to Karazhan? Midnight's Eternal Reigns. Second to last attempt. Um, not looking good so far. <laughs> We're like 170 deep. Uh, brioche better than Jabot anyways? Nah. Brioche buns are too sweet. They're too sweet and they're too soft. I want crunchy and I want like a little sour almost. Almost like sourdough. The walls in our building are fine. The windows and doors do leak sound. Yeah, the one thing that, I don't know if it's specific to the building or just the way that our neighbors like to close their doors, but people will slam their doors around here <laughs> and it shakes the entire building. Uh, it will wake the dog up, it will wake the cat up. And it's one thing if you're just leaving in a hurry and I guess, you know, you're not closing the door manually, you just like fling it open and then allow it to shut and it slams once, fine. You know, you left, you're, you've gone to work or whatever. It's fine. You know, maybe you're having a bad day. I don't know your life. But people will slam their doors like 7 to 12 times in succession over like a 15 minute period. And I don't know what they're doing. Maybe bringing groceries in. But uh, it's every time, every time you think it's over, it's not quite over. It's not a problem. Um, it doesn't stop me from doing anything that I need to do. I don't think it overly stresses me out. But I will one day be very happy if I can eventually get myself into a house where I am the only one allowed to slam the door. Uh, one time I ordered online for pickup, and they substituted white rice for frozen rice. <laughs> Otherwise really convenient, just remember to pick a do not substitute. Yeah. I never- I always think of myself as being very laid back and easygoing until somebody gives me brioche buns instead of ciabatta buns, and I'm like, oh no, I'm a nightmare. <laughs> always love your videos, finally able to catch your streams. Welcome, Luder Buho. I like ciabatta for sandwiches, they don't get it soggy. Uh, my neighbors once complained that I forgot to remove my Christmas decorations in my kitchen window. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Should get a stethoscope and figure out what game it is. Yeah, just spy on my neighbors for fun. Combine the two bread doughs, that would probably be good. Hazel inspired me. I now have a large mug of miso soup and some amazing scented green tea. You are living the life over there. My roommate slams doors too. I'm silent even when I'm the only one home. Yeah. I'm, I, I like to think I'm pretty quiet because I live in an apartment, but I look forward to one day making noise. Like there are things that I don't do because there's people that live downstairs. I do not play just dance games. I do not do indoor workouts except for yoga. Nothing with jumping or stepping because I know it's loud for downstairs. And especially right now, we're all home all the time. I'm not trying to make anybody's life harder. So I've accepted that I will wait until I have my own floor with nobody underneath it. And then I will jump up and down a lot. Um, but I'm looking forward to that day because I really enjoy playing dance games, not on stream, but just for exercise. Uh, and also because it's fun. There's something, there's a special kind of joy that you can only get when you give your very most to try to do a dance that is clearly over your head and outside of your capabilities. Um, but you're still getting great exercise and you look ridiculous and it's fun, you know, just by yourself, not for other people. I'm on 114 attempts on reins, 220 on charhand. I live in a student house with four other people. Our kitchen's really messy. It's driving me insane. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. I uh, we used to I used to have uh, more roommates, and for the most part, for the most part, people did a decent job about cleaning up after themselves. But I definitely, in my mind, have a tighter time frame for when I expect a kitchen to be clean after a meal has happened than other people. There are people that will like they do it the other way around, right? Like they do dishes and then they cook. And then they don't do dishes again until the next time that they cook. And that drives me insane, which is just like a quirk of mine. So um, I ended up doing both. Like I would do dishes before I cooked because I don't, I don't like cooking if I don't have a clean kitchen to cook in. I don't want to put new mess on top of old mess. I need a nice clean place to make a mess in. Otherwise it's compounding and that bothers me. So I would, I'll, I'll clean first and then again at the end. Uh, the worst neighbors I've ever had. The ones above us, they would smoke. Oh. That really sucks. That's always been kind of a nightmare. I mean, it's worse in an apartment because like you say, you've got people like directly next to you. So you have issues like that with the walls and the, and the cigarette smoke. But that's always been kind of a nightmare about what if you save up for years and you finally get a house and then you either have neighbors or new neighbors move in and you're stuck with them because everybody owns the house. And it's just like a nightmare situation. You know, what do you do? <laughs> I guess you just hope you have enough space that you can't bother each other too much. Uh, do dishes, then cook. That's like sock, shoe, sock, shoe. Somebody once asked me if I ever put on my socks, sock, shoe, sock, shoe. And then the next time I did it, 
the next time I put on my socks and shoes. I did it that way just to see, you know, what the big deal is. Everybody says that's like putting your, your milk in the bowl before the cereal. And I've tried that too. And you know, it's not life ruining. It doesn't make you a monster. <laughs> Some things do. I once lived with five boys. I ended up always cleaning the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> Get the mount already. I would like the mount. This will be attempt number 173. I don't do very much damage, do I? Mm, oh, you know what? I should use some cooldowns. Let's get some wings and, uh, actually, I don't know if the Guardian does any damage. I think it just helps me live, but it's fine. Uh, I can use my Light Forged ability. That'll help. I wonder what this guy does, you know, when we're not fighting him. He's always just sitting in the middle here, but I wonder if he ever, like, gets out in the chats with the stable hands or, like, visits the other horses. What if he's- what if he likes one of the other horses better, but this one already has all of his armor and stuff on it, so now he can't switch. And then maybe his horse knows that. It's kind of jealous. Alright, attempt 173. Uh, I got a curious coin. <laughs> Does that count? As long as you aren't doing shoe, shoe, sock, sock. You just throw your socks on over the shoes. Uh, do you wear outdoor shoes in your house? I heard Americans do that. No, 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 no. I think that's not so much a strictly, like, American thing. And more so depending on where in America you live and what the climate is like. Uh, we're in the Pacific Northwest here, so it is rainy and muddy for a good portion of the year. And while there are some people in some situations where people will wear outdoor shoes inside... Uh, first of all, not in my house, and second of all, usually people will take off shoes at the door. Um, I have heard, and I don't know firsthand because I've never lived there, but I've heard in drier climates in the States, um, people will wear shoes inside because they're not tracking mud, and it still would track dirt and dust in. Um, I would still take off my shoes regardless, but I also really like slippers, uh, so, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Mythologic, thank you for the seven-month reset. Seven months already. And Dismo TV with a brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Good morning. Afternoon for you. I think I have missed a few streams. What the fish... What fish tank is that? I like it. Uh, welcome. That is my beta tank. So you can see somewhere in there. Oh, yeah. He's sitting in his favorite roots again. That is my beta fish Ori. And then the tank itself you can see behind me. So it's like a, it's like a big rimless cube tank. Uh, it's a six gallon tank with some plants grown out at the top of it. Okay, this is our last, very last, uh, last um, attempt of the day. Uh, not like we'll do other stuff on stream. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to end until five, but it is my last character, unless I get my horde characters set up, but they're like really not good enough for this. I don't want to go get them gear. It's like too late. <laughs> I will wear shoes inside when I'm in work mode, like cleaning or one, not, not, but not most of the time. I understand the desire to have something on your feet. I don't like going around indoors barefoot unless I've, like, just vacuumed. Because you're going to get, like, cat and dog hair on your feet. Um, there is nothing worse than stepping on, like, a crumb or a piece of cat litter. And I sweep all the time. I sweep every day to reduce the amount of crumbs and cat litter on my floors. But still, um, I would rather have at least a sock, if not a sock and a slipper, to insulate me from such horrors. Uh, runs with wands. Thank you for the thank you for the 250 bits. Ultimate RNG vibes. All right, maybe this is the one. Also, Jay Gonzalez with a Jay Gonzalez 394 with a brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. That's your better tank. Where's your worst tank? <laughs> uh, my living room tank uh, is not worse, but I don't really know what my plan is with it. I had added some adult endlers to there, and I might move them out. I might take them out and put them in the 10 gallon instead. I feel like the current in that tank is too strong for them. I lost one of the females, and it could have just been- I've heard it's pretty common for them to die after labor, but I don't know for sure that that's what happened, and I feel like I want to move the other ones, but I don't want to put them back in the five because it's too crowded in there, so I might set up the ten. I don't know. Uh, just got midnight. <laughs> You're my good luck charm. Grats, David. I'm- I'm deeply and- and entirely and 1000% happy for you. Congrats. Only wear shoes indoors if I forgot something. Other than that, no shoes indoors. Exactly, yeah. Just just for me. I mean, growing up in BC, uh, it's <laughs> your shoes do not come inside clean no matter what time of year it is. And their babies are growing up okay? Yeah, they're doing good. They're doing good. 
I, they're looking big enough now to start eating like regular flake food and not just the super fine dusted stuff. I still kind of crush it with my fingers, but I gave them some regular flakes today. I can't decide if I should do that all the time. I think they're almost big enough to start eating the, um, the bug bites too. <laughs> Did you decide if you're going to go heels in Shadowlands? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, people don't believe me because I do have admittedly a track record of uh, not changing my main but I am going to be healing for, at the very least, the first tier. I vacuum every day. Keeps the dog, dust and the dog hair in the litter. Also, I hate having things on my feet. Yeah, I probably could stand to vacuum every day. We have one of those, um, like, uh, those Dyson vacuums you just, like, charge in your wall, so it's really quick to just sort of pick it up and, and vacuum really quick. You don't have to, like, roll out the cord and find a place to plug it in and everything like that. But the cat despises the vacuum. She... Hates it very, very much. She will hide until it's gone. Um, and I don't like disturbing her. So we just vacuum once, maybe twice a week. But then I have a broom. And I love broom. Because broom is quiet. Broom is calm. Broom makes a nice, nice sweeping noise. Broom's great. We like broom. Um, I don't know why I've decided to give it and call it broom as though that its name. that's its name. I'm not a crazy broom lady. But I do like sweeping. Um, back when I worked retail, that was one of my jobs. Not so much at the store. That one had... Um, carpet, but I worked in the gas station for a while and like a little convenience store area. Um, I was, I was in charge of sweeping and I adored sweeping because you take a broom and you sweep and then you collect all the dirt and you get rid of it and you're like, wow, I did that. Look at me go. Shower. As usual, demon hunters incredibly faster at anything they try to do, even if they're not wearing any gear. Although louder than a broom and not quite as strong as a vacuum, mechanical sweepers are cat friendly. What on earth is a mechanical sweeper? I feel like my broom takes me like 11 seconds. Mind you, my apartment is not that big and we only have hard floors like in like the kitchen and bathroom basically. So it takes very little time to sweep. I'm sure if I had a bigger house. I love dusting the shelves when I worked in retail and nobody else seemed to do it. They had the best dusting stuff. They had like the pledge spray. They had like those Swiffer claws that had like the microfiber that would like hold the dust. It was great. Also, I had like a giant line of printers. And if you, you know, if you've ever met a printer, you know, they love dust. I love the three demon hunters solely for the farming speed. I have a carpet sweeper. It's good for between vacuums, but not a replacement, but helps ameliorate the pet hair situation. So is it like a rake? I don't, I've never heard of a, I've never heard of this before. Thought about buying the Mythic Nazoth mount, or do you prefer the farm aspect? I like farming. Um, I don't, I don't really like getting carried if I can avoid it. Um, I would usually rather do something myself, even if it means like waiting three expansions until I can farm it myself. If I'm not good enough to get something at time, then I'd rather not have it. I don't want to have it just because... I paid for it for, for, for difficult stuff like that. Um, for something that's just like a rare drop. And sometimes I feel like farming it and sometimes I'll just buy it. <sighs> um, I don't know which stream I turned out on, but how many weeks have we been backtracking and then jumping down? Uh, I don't know exactly. A few. It's been, it's been a little bit. It, I didn't used to do it on all of my characters. The ones that were, that did more damage, I would keep running straight. But for now, it's just kind of easiest to do it the same way every time because then I don't have to think as much. So, works out. Just the push lawn mower at vacuums. I often think, what if one day I have a lawn? I must lawn mow. But when I was a teenager and I was like mowing our our child like my childhood lawn with like the big lawn mower that had like the the ripcord and everything, that was too much lawn mower. I imagine that if I end up with lawn, I'm gonna end up with like, you know, a dozen square feet of lawn, like a very small amount of lawn. And there must be a way to trim your lawn without having that much lawnmower. They must make, like, smaller, dinkier lawnmowers 
for people with sad little, sad little, you know, suburban plots of lawn. Because, uh, you know, something quieter, you know, that doesn't, you don't have to, like, gas it up. If it's not that much lawn to begin with. So that was attempt 174. I did not drum roll, but I also did not get it. Uh, but next week, we're going to be getting close to attempt 200. I've got another 18 characters to do next week. Electric lawnmowers? That must be what I need. Uh, I won't tell you how many times I had to farm for the new midnight. A Roomba, but for grass? They make electric mowing machines? Excellent. Battery-powered push mowers. I have an electric lawnmower. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. I don't ever see myself maintaining a large lawn. Like, I feel like if I had a lot of land, I would want it to be not lawn. <laughs> I'm not that I'm not that excited about lawn. Um, I'm not I, I've never related to people that are very, very into their lawn. Um, I'd rather just have like, I don't know, a garden or something like that. He was so fast no one had time to drum roll. Uh, I'm watching the lady I watch every week for my wow it is. You found the stream. Welcome. Achievement unlocked. Diddle -diddle -diddle -diddle. Alright, so I have uh, 20 minutes left, and, you know, that's 20 minutes that I can use to host a 20-minute fish party and see if, um, you know, spend 20 minutes trying to get this last fish that I need, because I still need one more secret fish for my uh, secret fish and where to find them achievement for my hyper-compressed ocean toy. So many syllables. My hearthstone is set to duskwood because uh, Karazhan is my life on all of these alts. It's the only thing that I'm really doing. Um, I will move their hearthstones probably to Rust Bolt um, for the sake of farming like Rust Feather and whatnot once I get Kara. Uh, Shugan, thanks for the bits. Have to run. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for the website. <laughs> Big shout outs. Mm. Uh, do one Rust Feather tip. Now I want to I farm Seeker Fish. So I'm going to go to Nagrand. Hi, Hazel, how are you? What's up, Abdul? I'm doing good. I'm having a good day. I've been much more productive today and yesterday, and I don't want to jinx it, but I am hopeful that I can get at least a good chunk of the, the Shadowlands videos that I want to out. I should have another one tomorrow. I am going to Negrand, so I'm going to go Stormwind, and then Shatrath, and then Fly. Well manicured lawn is, I think, the ugliest use of lawn space, yard space. Natural growth looks better. So I understand that there should be some amount of lawn management done because I get that if your neighbors have lawns and you have like a jungle, then the jungle can be like a breeding ground for things like mosquitoes and it can also, you know, cause a lot of plants that give off seeds and spores that then go on to plant themselves in your neighbor's lawns. I get people being frustrated if you just have like an absolute mess because that can cause problems, right? Like you can have wildlife starting to live there that you don't necessarily want in a suburban setting. But there's got to be other things that you can do. Um, I am a big fan of uh, raised, raised beds, like raised garden beds, um, or rock gardens, or succulent gardens, or, you know, <laughs> anything more exciting than just lawn. Your look will probably change when you have a lush lawn. It's a simple joy. Maybe. I wouldn't mind having a little bit of a lawn. <laughs> I just got out of a non-productive funk over the past few days. Must be something in the air. And snakes. Snakes. Snakes? Uh, Hazel, my three-year-old daughter just said that she thinks you were a princess and that her daddy fixes lawnmowers. She says hi. Hello. <laughs> That's the nicest thing anybody ever said to me. Uh, HOAs keep <laughs> lawns in shape. Oh, boy. All right, so I'm picking an island. Last time I grabbed one of these ones. I needed like a blank island. I think I used this one last time. I was told there was a better one, but this one worked well enough. Um, pre custom starter group. Secret fish party in the grand. Uh, where, where am I at? 70, 71, 69. Let's make a bubble bath. So that is my group. I am going to apply my secret fish goggle buff. And then I am basically going to be flying around <laughs> looting fish and trying to get the unseen mimic. So if any of you play on Alliance North American servers and you have uh, secret fish goggles of your own from having done the secret fish and mechagon achievement, if you got like 15, 20 minutes and you don't mind helping me out, 
um, I would love for you to come by and just sort of hang out and uh, have your goggle buff up. Anybody doing that will be helping spawn bubbles, and uh, and maybe maybe I can get lucky and grab a fish. I hope to have an English lawn. What's an English lawn? <laughs> How do the English do lawns differently? Also, where are my bubbles at? I put my goggles on. What else do I need to do? I'm kind of done with mailboxes and horrific visions. Do you mean... Oh, you're done? Are you... Are you upset with the concept and you are giving up on your mail muncher? Or you got your mail muncher and now you're done? English, we just put a lawnmower over them. Uh, English lawns are like light green and dark green art stuff? Interesting. When you say English lawn, I'm imagining a regular lawn, but with hedges and topiaries. <laughs> Interesting. I live in Colorado. It seems like a lot of people just have rocks instead of grass, so no lawn to mow. Yeah, my grandparents did that. I know some areas won't let you do that because they want the, um, they want the plants for like wild, or for like bees and biodiversity and stuff, although I don't know if lawns <laughs> make for biodiversity, but still. There's some places that won't let you do that, but I feel like if I can get away with it. If I live far enough south, then I would enjoy doing outdoor, like, cacti and succulents. I think that's the only thing that I would like about living in California, is being able to... What do they call that? Zare escaping? But, uh, I don't think I realistically want to leave the Pacific Northwest, if I can avoid it. The guy we bought our house from was a yard guy, so I now have the most lush grass to deal with. It's the worst. Uh, not giving up, but very upset after 396 opens. Ah, I see. I see. That is that is understandably frustrating. How do I picnic on rocks, though? Yeah. Maybe you don't. You just sit inside and you look out at your rocks. I want bird feeders. I have a hummingbird feeder. And it's the best thing ever. I fill, I make I make the syrup. You do four parts water to one part sugar. Um, I like to dissolve it in very hot water and then chill it before I put it out there. And uh, and the hummingbirds come by and they have like these red 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 heads and they make funny sounds and uh, they're really fun to watch. And I want to have eventually like bird seed feeders and suet cake feeders. And I want to take pictures of the birds and I want to like count the birds. I want to know how many different birds. I want to be able to like see a bird roll up and be like, yo, I know what bird that is. I can't give an example right now because I don't know birds. But I feel like that's the best retirement hobby that a person could have, or just a hobby in general, but you generally see it with retired people. To just like, you know, uh, bird watch, but like from your yard. Uh, we got a hummingbird feeder too, it's the best type of feeder. Games will always be my hobby. But like, what if you're playing games, but you have a window within sight of you, and then through the window you can see birds. So like, you're doing your mount runs, and you're like, oh man, I didn't get my mount. But then you look at your window, and there's a bird, and you know everything's okay. You know, the world is a tough place to be, and life is short and fleeting and sometimes unstable. And that's scary. You know, there's a lot of scary, sad things in the world. But it can't be all bad. Because there's hummingbirds, and if you can feed them and then have them show up, and you can be like, "Oh, up, bird?" That's like one nice thing you can have in your day. Why not? It's great. We hung a bird feeder in our otherwise vacant balcony. We sometimes call it the cat TV. I collect rocks. I'm a nightmare to help move. Oh boy, I have I have a, I have some rocks, although I didn't collect them specifically because of their rockiness. I have them because they're aquarium rocks. They're just pretty rocks that are aquarium safe. Um, but if they don't have a place in my current aquascape, I have to keep them for the future because, you know, they're expensive, right? Um, so I, uh, <sighs> those, those are kind of heavy, heavy boxes whenever I try to move them. I don't have any, um, one day I would like to, to, to um, aquascape using dragonstone or seru stone, but they're a little bit too sharp for me to feel good about using in like a beta tank. I know many people do it and it works fine, but 
Every bed of fish I've ever had is just, you know, it's got a death wish with anything slightly sharp in his tank, so river stones for them. But if it was, you know, just like a regular community tank, you could do something like that. Or you can do, um, oh, I forgot. This loot lag situation is the worst thing ever. <laughs> It single-handedly makes the secret fish grind more uncomfortable. The fact that you have to just, like, keep clicking the loot button. And I don't really know how to fix it. People were saying you gotta vendor the fish. And I don't have any secret fish in my bags right now at all. And it's still, it just, like, warms up after a bit. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, my favorite mount that I've collected? Uh, I change my answer pretty often, but a good staple go-to answer is the, uh... The Snapback Scuttler. So this one I'm on actually is, is up there as well. I really like the Blood Feaster. But the Snapback Scuttler is the Najatar Meta Achievement Mount. And it's just fantastic. It's just the best thing. It's great. Aquascaping is probably one of the coolest hobbies at home. I don't know how people aquascape on a budget. I, um, like whenever I have done any kind of aquascaping, I don't get the really expensive stuff. But it still ends up costing me, especially the plants, more than I set out to spend. And then people that like go really deep in and get like the really fancy rocks and the super clear rimless tanks and like the special sand and they're doing like their, uh, you know, their CO2 injection sy systems and it gets so expensive. Uh, so we are in uh, Nagrand, so we are in Outland, not Draenor. Uh, so you don't need Draenor flying. Don't be flying when one spawns? Oh. Oh, well, let's try that. I was on the ground, and that one's okay. Because I like that idea. I can do that. I can just I can just run around on the ground. It's fine. Mm. <laughs> but I want to, but I want to fly. But I, but I want to, but I want to catch up. So as long as you're landed when there's, when they spawn. But that one I was flying when it spawned. So now I have to click it 17,000 times. Hmm, interesting. The tanks look so cool with all the plants and stuff. Yeah. My compromise is doing, like, low-tech tanks that you just stuff full of java ferns and anubias. And, like, maybe a little java moss, maybe some cryptocorns, but, like, nothing fancy. And then from those plants, you're just propagating more plants and then just getting it really densely planted. It takes forever for them to fill in. Um, I only just got happy with my, I only like just got happy with the way that my, um, <laughs> it's fun, with the way that my living room tank looks after it had been set up for about a year and a half. That tank I think is two years old now and it looks pretty decent, but it took so long for the ferns and the Anubias to fill in the way that I wanted them to. But now they look pretty good. I wanted another snail tank one day. I had a I had a snail tank once and the plants just loved it. The plants went so hard in that tank. Oh, I got a goby. I'm looking for an unseen mimic. I'm trying to I'm trying to loot uh, the rare fish. The last one and it can be looted from anywhere, so it's just a matter of getting lucky. How often did you have to work at your tank to get it looking the way that you wanted it to? So the actual work, I really only do like a week, like I do weekly maintenance. So I will, um, I'll do weekly maintenance on it. So every week I will go in and I will dose fertilizers as needed. I will pull out any algae that I can. Um, if there's algae growing in there, I'll rub it off the leaves if I need to. Um, but for the most part, it's just about tweaking things, like being like, hey, this, you know, there's a little too much algae, I'm going to turn the lights down a little bit, or I'm going to, I'm going to shorten the light cycle a little bit, or, you know, I'm noticing pinholes in the leaves of the java ferns, I'm going to dose a little bit of potassium, or, um, stuff like that. So, little tweaks over time. The actual work, like, the, the time it takes to do is not that bad, it's just a matter of patience, I think, is the thing with it. What are you doing? Just came back. I am trying my luck for the Unseen Mimic, which is the last secret fish and where to find them fish that I need. Uh, we've got some fish goggled folks uh, hanging out in Grand. Um, we're, we're up north here. And seeing, uh, see, see, seeing how we can do. My poor tiny crab is getting trampled. Why not just use a grandma so you don't fly? I think it's actually um, whoever, maybe whoever spawned the orb, whether they were flying. I could just use a ground map, that's true. But uh, yeah, let's, let's just get in the crab. 
Let's just get on the crab. Snap back scuttler. There we go. <laughs> I have to resist the urge to run over and duel the crab. Uh, Jackson Ox, thank you very much for the bits. Good luck with the fish. Thank you. Uh, now that I am, now that I have, uh, camouflaged myself as a denizen of the sea, now it can't possibly continue to evade me. <laughs> this mount's so cool. One of my favorite mounts. It's just, it's not too big. You know, it moves in a way that is unique because, of the, because they've rotated it to the side. So it's like a sideways walking crab, but it's not like weavy. It's not bobbing. You know, it's just kind of living its life. Uh, Tira Gosu, thank you for the five month resub. And out of 10. Got fish in Pandaria in two tries. Yeah, for me, it's just this last one that's stuck. All of the fish that needed specific zones were quite easy to get. There was only one of them that I got even a little bit unlucky with, but this is just, uh, this is just kind of the, <laughs> the long haul. Okay. Oh! We did it! Go team! Woo! Uh, I got my Unseen Mimic. I got my Hyper Compressed Ocean. Did it go to my bags? Oh no, it's been added to my toy box. Hooray! Alright, we gotta use that. Look at that! Good job, guys! Thanks for the help! Uh, if you've never seen this toy, basically it's... I mean, it looks like this. It lasts for, I think, a couple of minutes. Two minutes or so, two or three minutes. And then anybody in the area, they don't have to have the toy. Anybody can click on it to fish from it. The, your bobber will always be in the same place. So you can just kind of keep your mouse um, in, in the same spot. You don't have to um, pull out your... You don't have to pull out your fishing rod or anything like that. You just click on it and it will fish with a default fishing rod appearance. And this can catch any fish. Any fish at all. <laughs> um, so you're getting... You're getting all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know if I've been looting them, actually. <laughs> I think I, I, I don't know if I've actually been pulling them in. Uh, I just got a silver mackerel. You get all kinds of stuff. So it's like a fun toy to have to like kill time with before raid or, you know, you're waiting for people to show up for your dungeon group or whatever. Um, you can throw that down, get some fish, maybe get lucky. Because it pulls from all the fish loot tables, you can also get things like the pond nettle or the great sea ray. It's just like a really, really low chance. But you know, you got, you got, you got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> Jackson Dog, thanks for the bits. You gave me the luck. Watching you go after this toy inspired me to get my own. It's a fun grind. Um, if anybody is working on the... Let me see. If anybody is working on the um, secret fish and where to find them, so you're like going to all the different zones to get the fish and you want a uh, checklist, I made a Google Doc. I made a secret fish list that has like wow head links, um, some notes, the zone if needed, and then like a little checkbox so you can kind of keep track. Um, as I went through it, I was actually just highlighting rows and then highlighting rows um, as I went whenever I got one, just to make it very visually clear, just because I like having sheets like that. So I have a link for that if anybody wants to. You can just make your own copy and then you can edit it all you want. Uh, if I wanted to share that and I wanted to copy the link, I can... All right, Superman already got you. That's in chat. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for coming by. Uh, anybody that's working on their secret fish and they're just trying to get, like, the, um, the random ones, um, we do still have a fish party up on the island. Feel free to join the group. I am gonna dip out pretty soon, though, because I'm gonna get some dinner made, and then I'm gonna do a little more, uh, video stuff tonight, because, you know, it's all those pre-patch time, it's all the Shadowlands time, and I am a, a YouTuber, gosh darn it, so I should do some YouTubing. <laughs> Can I get old Iron Jaw? That's a question, actually. Tiny red carp are pretty rare. Uh, Ginger Maiden, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Two minutes to spare. Starting to start streaming last week. It's so fun. And I managed to get my first new mount on stream. Congrats. Have a nice night. Yeah, I'm gonna dip out just a hair early. Uh, I think I'm making sushi for dinner, so I should go put on my rice. Thank you all so much for coming. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon. I don't know what we're doing, but I have a feeling it's going to be all the things related because I'm Hazel and I have a problem. Uh, thanks so much, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.